Act One of Volpone. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Volpone, or The Fox, by Ben Jonson. Dramatis Personae. Volpone, a Magnifico. Read by Zachary Brustergeis. Mosca, his parasite. Read by Elizabeth Clett. Voltore, an advocate. Read by Peter Tucker. Corbaccio, an old gentleman. Read by Alan Matchstone. Corvino, a merchant. Read by Beth Thomas. Bonario, son to Corbaccio. Read by Todd. Sir Politic Woodby, a knight. Read by Todd. Peregrine, a gentleman traveller. Read by Inflected. Nano, a dwarf. Read by M.B. Castrone, an eunuch. And fourth avocatore. Read by Lambda. Andragino, an hermaphrodite. And Notario, the register. Read by Libby Gone. Lady Woodby, Sir Politic's wife. Read by Francis Brown. Celia, Corvino's wife. Read by Sarah Terry. First waiting woman and servant. Read by Abai. First avocatore and first merchant. By Mary Kay. Second avocatore and second merchant. Read by Mary J. Third avocatore, third merchant. And narration. Read by Elizabeth Clett. The Argument Volpone, childless, rich, feigns sick, despairs, offers his state to hopes of several heirs, lies languishing. His parasite receives presents of all, assures, deludes, then weaves other cross-plots, which ope themselves, are told. New tricks for safety are sought, they thrive. When bold, each tempts the other again, and all are sold. Prologue Now luck yet sends us, and a little wit will serve to make our play hit, according to the palates of the season. Here is rhyme, not empty of reason. This we were bid to credit from our poet, whose true scope, if you would know it, in all his poems still hath been this measure, to mix profit with your pleasure. And not as some, whose throats their envy failing, cry hoarsely, all he writes is railing. And when his plays come forth, think they can flout them, with saying he was a year about them. To this there needs no lie, but this his creature, which was two months since no feature, and though he dares give them five lives to mend it, tis known five weeks fully penned it. From his own hand without a coadjutor, novice, journeyman, or tutor. Yet thus much I can give you as a token of his play's worth. No eggs are broken, nor quaking custards with fierce teeth affrighted, wherewith your rout are so delighted nor hails he in a gull old ends reciting, to stop gaps in his loose writing, with such a deal of monstrous and forced action as might make Bethlehem a faction, nor made he his play for jests stolen from each table, but makes jests to fit his fable, and so presents quick comedy refined, as best critics have designed, the laws of time, place, persons he observeth, from no needful rule he swerveth, all gall and copperas from his ink he draineth, only a little salt remaineth, wherewith he'll rub your cheeks till red with laughter, they shall look fresh a week after. Act One, Scene One, A Room in Volpone's House. Enter Volpone and Mosca. Good morning to the day, and next, my gold, open the shrine that I may see my saint. Mosca withdraws the curtain and discovers piles of gold, plate, jewels, etc. Hail the world's soul and mine! More glad than is the teeming earth to see the longed-for sun peep through the horns of the celestial ram am I to view thy splendor darkening his, that lying here amongst my other hordes shewest like a flame by night, or like the day struck out of chaos when all darkness fled unto the centre. 
O thou son of Saul, but brighter than thy father, let me kiss with adoration thee and every relic of sacred treasure in this blessed room. Well did wise poets, by thy glorious name, title that age which they would have the best, thou being the best of things, and far transcending all style of joy in children, parents, friends, or any other waking dream on earth. Thy looks, when they to Venus did describe, they should have given her twenty thousand cupids, such are thy beauties and our loves. Dear saint, riches, the dumb god that givest all men tongues, that canst do naught, and yet makest men do all things, the price of souls, even hell with thee to boot is made worth heaven. Thou art virtue, fame, honor, and all things else. Who can get thee, he shall be noble, valiant, honest, wise. And what he will, sir. Riches are in fortune a greater good than wisdom is in nature. True, my beloved Mosca. Yet I glory more in the cunning purchase of my wealth than in the glad possession, since I gain no common way. I use no trade, no venture. I wound no earth with plowshares. Fat no beasts to feed the shambles. Have no mills for iron, oil, corn, or men to grind them into powder. I blow no subtle glass, expose no ships to threatenings of the furrow-faced sea. I turn no monies in the public bank, nor use her private. No, sir, nor devour soft prodigals. You shall have some will swallow a melting air as glibly as your Dutch will pills of butter, and ne'er purge for it. Tear forth the fathers of poor families out of their beds, and coffin them alive in some kind clasping prison, where their bones may be forthcoming, where the flesh is rotten. But your sweet nature doth abhor these courses. You loathe the widows, or the orphans' tears should wash your pavements, or their piteous cries ring in your roofs and beat the air for vengeance. Right, Mosca, I do loathe it. And besides, sir, you are not like a thresher that doth stand with a huge flail, watching a heap of corn, and hungry dares not taste the smallest grain, but feeds on mallows and such bitter herbs, nor like the merchant, who hath filled his vaults with Romagna and rich Candian wines, yet drinks the lees of Lombard's vinegar. You will not lie in straw, whilst moths and worms feed on your sumptuous hangings and soft beds. You know the use of riches, and dare give now from that bright heap to me, your poor observer, or to your dwarf, or your hermaphrodite, your eunuch, or what other household trifle your pleasure allows maintenance. Hold thee, Mosca. Gives him money. Take of my hand. Thou strikest on truth in all, and they are envious term thee parasite. Call forth my dwarf, my eunuch, and my fool, and let them make me sport. Exit Mosca. What should I do but cocker up my genius, and live free to all delights my fortune calls me to? I have no wife, no parent, child, ally to give my substance to, but whom I make must be my heir, and this makes men observe me. This draws new clients daily to my house. Women and men of every sex and age that bring me presents, send me plate, coin, jewels, with hope that when I die, which they expect each greedy minute, it shall then return tenfold upon them, whilst some, covetous above the rest, seek to engross me whole, and counterwork the one unto the other, contend in gifts as they would seem in love. Oh, which I suffer, playing with their hopes, and am content to coin them into profit, to look upon their kindness, and take more, and look on that, still bearing them in hand, letting the cherry knock against their lips, and draw it by their mouths, and back again. How now? Re-enter Mosca, with Nano, Andragino, and Castrone. Now room for fresh gamesters, who do will you to know, they do bring you neither play nor university show, and therefore do entreat you that whatsoever they rehearse may not fare a whit the worse for the false pace of the verse. If you wonder at this, you will wonder more ere we pass, for no, here is enclosed the soul of Pythagoras, that juggler divine, as hereafter shall follow. Which soul, 
fast and loose sir first came from apollo and was breathed into ethelides mercurius his son where it had the gift to remember all that ever was done from thence it fled forth and made quick transmigration to goldy-locked euphorbus who was killed in good fashion at the siege of old troy by the cuckold of sparta hermotimus was next i find it in my charts to whom it did pass where no sooner it was missing but with one pyrrhus of delos it learned to go a-fishing and thence did it enter the sophist of greece from pythagore she went into a beautiful piece hight aspasia the meretrix and the next toss of her was again of a whore she became a philosopher crates the cynic as itself doth relate it since kings knights and beggars knaves lords and fools gat it besides ox and ass camel mule goat and brock in all which it hath spoke as in the cobbler's cock but i come not here to discourse of that matter or his one two or three or his great oath by quater his musics his trigon his golden thigh or his telling how elements shift but i would ask how of late thou best suffered translation and shifted thy coat in these days of reformation like one of the reformed a fool as you see counting all old doctrine heresy but not on thine own forbid meats hast thou ventured on fish when first a carthusian i entered why then thy dogmatical silence hath left thee of that an obstreperous lawyer bereft me ha oh, wonderful change when sir lawyer forsook thee for pythagore's sake what body then took thee a good dull mule and how by that means thou wert brought to allow of the eating of beans yes mm. but from the mule into whom didst thou pass into a very strange beast by some writers called an ass by others a precise pure illuminate brother of those devour flesh and sometimes one another and will drop you forth a libel or a sanctified lie betwixt every spoonful of nativity pie now quit thee for heaven of that profane nation and gently report thy next transmigration to the same that i am a creature of delight and what is more than a fool and hermaphrodite now prithee sweet soul in all thy variation which body wouldst thou choose to keep up thy station troth this i am in even here would i tarry cause here the delight of each sex thou canst vary alas those pleasures be stale and forsaken no tis your fool wherewith i am so taken the only one creature that i can call blest for all other forms i have proved most distressed spoke true as thou wert in pythagoras still this learned opinion we celebrate will fellow eunuch as behooves us with all our wit and art to dignify that whereof ourselves are so great and special a part now very very pretty mosca this was thy invention if it please my patron not else it doth good mosca then it was sir nano and castrone sing fools they are the only nation worth men's envy or admiration free from care or sorrow taking selves and others merry-making all they speak or do is sterling your fool he is your great man's darling and your lady's sport and pleasure tongue and bauble are his treasure e'en his faith begetteth laughter and he speaks truth free from slaughter he's the grace of every feast and sometimes the chiefest guest hath his trencher and his stool when wit waits upon the fool oh who would not be he 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 knocking without who's that away exeunt nano and castrone look mosca fool be gone exit androgyno tis signor voltore the advocate i know him by his knock <laughs> fetch me my gown my furs and nightcaps say my couch is changing and let him entertain himself a while without i the gallery exit mosca 
Now, now my clients begin their visitation. <laughs> Vulture, kite, raven, and gorecrow, all my birds of prey, that think me turning carcass, now they come. I am not for them yet. Re-enter Mosca, with the gown, etc. How now? The news? A piece of plate, sir. Of what bigness? Huge, massy, and antique, with your name inscribed and arms engraven. Good! And not a fox stretched on the earth, with fine delusive slights, mocking a gaping crow, huh, Mosca? Sharp, sir. Give me my furs. Puts on his sick dress. Why dost thou laugh so, man? <laughs> I cannot choose, sir, when I apprehend what thoughts he has without now as he walks, that this might be the last gift he should give, that this would fetch you. If you died to-day and gave him all, what he should be to-morrow? What large return would come of all his ventures? How he should worshipped be and reverenced, ride with his furs and footcloths, waited on by herds of fools and clients, have clear way made for his mule as lettered as himself, be called the great and learned advocate, and then concludes there's naught impossible. Yes, to be learned, Mosca. Oh, no, rich implies it. Hood an ass with reverend purple so you can hide his too ambitious ears, and he shall pass for a cathedral doctor. My caps, my caps, good Mosca, fetch him in. Stay, sir, your ointment for your eyes. That's true. Dispatch, dispatch. I long to have possession of my new present. That and thousands more I hope to see you lord of. Thanks, kind Mosca. And that when I am lost in blended dust, and hundreds such as I am in succession. Nay, that were too much, Mosca. You shall live still to delude these harpies. Loving Mosca. Tis well. My pillow now, and let him enter. Exit Mosca. Now my feigned cough, my physic, and my gout, my apoplexy, palsy, and catars, help with your forced functions this my posture, wherein this three year I have milked their hopes. He comes, I hear him. Uh, 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 oh. Re enter Mosca, introducing Voltore with a piece of plate. You still are what you were, sir. Only you of all the rest are he commands his love, and you do wisely to preserve it thus, with early visitation and kind notes of your good meaning to him, which I know cannot but come most grateful. Patron, sir, here Signor Voltore is come. What say you? Sir, Signor Voltore is come this morning to visit you. I thank him and hath brought a piece of antique plate, bought of St. Mark, with which he here presents you. He is welcome. Pray him to come more often. Yes. What says he? He thanks you and desires you see him often. Mosca. My patron. Bring him near. Where is he? I long to feel his hand. The plate is here, sir. How fare you, sir? I thank you, Signor Voltore. Where is the plate? Mine eyes are bad. Voltore, putting it into his hands. I'm sorry to see you still thus weak. Mosca, aside, that he's not weaker. You are too munificent. No, sir, would to heaven I could as well give health to you as that plate. You give, sir what you can i thank you your love hath taste in this and shall not be unanswered i pray you see me often yes i shall sir be not far from me do you observe that sir hearken unto me still it will concern you you are a happy man sir know your good i cannot now last long you are his heir, sir. Am I? I feel me going. <laughs> I'm sailing to my port. <laughs> and I am glad I am so near my haven. Alas, kind gentleman, 
Well, we all must go. But, Mosca! Age will conquer. Pray thee, hear me. Am I inscribed his heir for certain? Are you? I do beseech you, sir, you will vouchsafe to write me in your family. All my hopes depend upon your worship. I am lost except the rising sun do shine on me. It shall both shine and warm thee, Mosca. Oh, sir, I am a man that hath not done your love all the worst offices. Here I wear your keys, see all your coffers and your caskets locked, keep the poor inventory of your jewels, your plate and monies, am your steward, sir, husband your goods here. But am I sole heir? Without a partner, sir, confirmed this morning. The wax is warm yet, and the ink scarce dry upon the parchment. Happy, happy me! By what good chance, sweet Mosca? Your desert, sir. I know no second cause. Thy modesty is not to know it. Well, we shall requite it. He ever liked your course, sir. That first took him. I oft have heard him say how he admired men of your large profession, that could speak to every cause, and things mere contraries till they were hoarse again, yet all be law that with most quick agility could turn and re-return could make knots and undo them and give forked counsel take provoking gold on either hand and put it up these men he knew would thrive with their humility and for his part he thought he should be blessed to have his air of such a suffering spirit so wise so grave of so perplexed a tongue and loud withal that would not wag nor scarce lie still without a fee when every word your worship but lets fall is a sheck in loud knocking without who's that one knocks i would not have you seen sir and yet pretend you came and went in haste i'll fashion an excuse and gentle sir when you do come to swim in golden lard up to the arms in honey that your chin is borne up stiff with fatness of the flood think on your vassal but remember me I have not been your worst of clients. Mosca! When will you have your inventory brought, sir? Or see a copy of the will? Anon! I will bring them to you, sir. Away, be gone. Put business in your face. Exit Voltore. Volpone, springing up. Excellent Mosca! <laughs> Come hither, let me kiss thee. Keep you still, sir. Here is Corbaccio set the plate away the vulture's gone and the old ravens come betake you to your silence and your sleep stand there and multiply putting the plate to the rest now shall we see a wretch who is indeed more impotent than this can feign to be yet hopes to hop over his grave enter corbaccio signor corbaccio you're very welcome sir how does your patron troth as he did sir no amends what mends he no sir he's rather worse that's well where is he upon his couch sir newly fallen asleep does he sleep well no wink sir all this night nor yesterday but slumbers good he should take some counsel of physicians i have brought him an opiate here from mine own doctor he will not hear of drugs why i myself stood by while it was made saw all the ingredients and know it cannot but most gently work my life for his tis but to make him sleep volpone aside ay his last sleep if he would take it sir he has no faith in physic say you say you he has no faith in physic he does think most of your doctors are the greater danger and worse disease to escape i often have heard him protest that your physician should never be his heir not i his heir not your physician sir oh no 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 i i do not mean it no sir nor their fees he cannot brook he says they flay a man before they kill him right i do conceive you and then they do it by experiment 
for which the law not only doth absolve them, but gives them great reward, and he is loath to hire his death so. It is true, they kill with as much license as a judge. Nay, more, for he but kills sure where the law condemns, and these can kill him too. Ay, or me, or any man. How does his apoplex? Is that strong in him still? Most violent. His speech is broken, and his eyes are set, his face drawn longer than twas wont. How, how? Stronger than he was wont? No, sir, his face drawn longer than twas wont. Oh, good. His mouth is ever gaping, and his eyelids hang. Good. A freezing numbness stiffens all his joints, and makes the colour of his flesh like lead. Tis good. His pulse beats slow and dull. Good symptoms still. And from his brain... I conceive you good. Flows a cold sweat with a continual room, forth the resolved corners of his eyes. Is't possible? Yet I am better. Huh. How does he with the swimming of his head? Oh, sir, tis past the scotomy. He now hath lost his feeling, and hath left to snort. You hardly can perceive him that he breathes. Excellent, excellent. Sure I shall outlast him. This makes me young again, a score of years. I was coming for you, sir. Has he made his will? What has he given me? No, sir. Nothing? Huh. He has not made his will, sir. Oh, oh, oh. But what did Voltore, the lawyer, hear? He smelt a carcass, sir, when he but heard my master was about his testament, as I did urge him to it for your good. He came unto him, did he? I thought so. Yes, and presented him this piece of plate. To be his heir. I do not know, sir. True, I know it too. Mosca, aside. By your own scale, sir. Well, I shall prevent him yet. See, Mosca, look. Here I have brought a bag of bright check wines. We'll quite weigh down his plate. Mosca taking the bag yea marry sir this is true physic this your sacred medicine no talk of opiates to this great elixir tis aurum palpabile if not portabile it shall be ministered to him in his bowl i do 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 most blessed cordial this will recover him yes do 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 i think it were not best sir what to recover him oh no 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 by no means why sir this will work some strange effect if he but feel it tis true therefore forbear i'll take my venture give it me again at no hand pardon me you shall not to do yourself that wrong sir i will so advise you you shall have it all how all sir tis your right your own no man can claim a part. Tis yours without a rival, decreed by destiny. How, how, good Mosca? I'll tell you, sir. This fit he shall recover. I do conceive you. And on first advantage of his gained sense will I re-importune him unto the making of his testament, and show him this. Pointing to the money. Good, good. "'Tis better yet if you will hear, sir.' "'Yes, with all my heart.' "'Now, would I counsel you, make home with speed. "'There frame a will, whereto you shall inscribe my master, your sole heir.' "'And disinherit my son?' "'Oh, sir, the better, for that colour shall make it much more taking.' "'Oh, but colour. "'This will, sir, you shall send it unto me. Now, when I come to enforce, as I will do, your cares, your watchings, and your many prayers, your more than many gifts, your this day's present, at last, produce your will, 
where, without thought, or at least regard, unto your proper issue, a son so brave and highly meriting, the stream of your diverted love hath thrown you upon my master, and made him your heir. He cannot be so stupid or stone-dead, but out of conscience and mere gratitude. He must pronounce me his. Tis true. This plot I did think on before. I do believe it. Do you not believe it? Yes, sir. Mine own project? Which, when he hath done, sir. Published me his heir? And you so certain to survive him? I? Being so lusty a man. Tis true. Yes, sir. I thought on that too. See how he should be the very organ to express my thoughts. You have not only done yourself a good. But multiplied it on my son. Tis right, sir. Still, my invention. Lass, sir, heaven knows it has been all my study, all my care, I e'en go grey withal, how to work things. I do conceive, sweet Mosca. You are he for whom I labour here. I do, do, do. I'll straight about it. Going. Rook go with you, raven. I know the honest. Masca, aside, you do lie, sir. And? Your knowledge is no better than your ears, sir. I do not doubt to be a father to thee. Nor I to gull my brother of his blessing. I may have my youth restored to me. Why not? Your worship is a precious ass. What sayest thou? I do desire your worship to make haste, sir. Tis done, tis done. I go. Exit. Volpone, leaping from his couch. Oh, I shall burst! <laughs> let out my sides, let out my sides! <laughs> Contain your flux of laughter, sir. You know this hope is such a bait, it covers any hook. Oh, but thy working, and thy placing it, I cannot hold. Good rascal, let me kiss thee. I never knew thee in so rare a humour. Alas, sir, I but do as I am taught. Follow your grave instructions, give them words, pour oil into their ears, and send them hence. Tis true, tis true. What a rare punishment is avarice to itself. Ay, with our help, sir. So many cares, so many maladies, so many fears attending on old age. Yea, death so often called on, as no wish can be more frequent with them, their limbs faint, their senses dull, their seeing, hearing, going, all dead before them. Yea, their very teeth, their instruments of eating failing them. Yet this is reckoned life. Nay, here was one, is now gone home, that wishes to live longer feels not his gout nor palsy, feigns himself younger by scores of years, flatters his age with confident belying it, hopes he may, with charms like Eson, have his youth restored, and with these thoughts so battens, as if fate would be as easily cheated on as he, and all turns air. Knocking within. Who's that there now? A third? Close, to your couch again. I hear his voice. It is Corvino, our spruce merchant. Volpone lies down as before. Dead. Another bout, sir, with your eyes. Anointing them. Who's there? Enter Corvino. Signor Corvino, come most wished for. Oh, how happy were you if you knew it now. Why? What? We're in. The tardy hour is come, sir. He is not dead? Not dead, sir, but as good. He knows no man. How shall I do, then? Why, sir? I have brought him here a pearl. Uh, perhaps he has so much remembrance left as to know you, sir. He still calls on you. Nothing but your name is in his mouth. Is your pearl orient, sir? Benis was never the owner of the like. Signor Corvino. Hark. Signor Corvino. He calls you. Step and give it him. He's here, sir. And he has brought you a rich pearl. How do you do, sir? Tell him it doubles the twelfth carat. Sir, he cannot understand. His hearing's gone. And yet it comforts him to see you. Say I have a diamond for him, too. Best show it, sir. Put it into his hand. 
"'Tis only there he apprehends. He has his feeling yet. I'll see how he grasps it. Alas, good gentleman, how pitiful the sight is. Tut, forget, sir. The weeping of an heir should still be laughter under a visor. Why, am I his heir? Sir, I am sworn I may not show the will till he be dead. But here has been Corbaccio, here has been Voltore, here were others too, I cannot number them, they were so many, all gaping here for legacies. But I, taking the vantage of his naming you, Signor Corvino, Signor Corvino, took paper and pen and ink, and there I asked him whom he would have his heir. Corvino. Who should be executor? Corvino. And to any question he was silent to, I still interpreted the nods he made through weakness for consent, and sent home the others, nothing bequeathed them but to cry and curse. Oh, my dear Mosca! They embrace. Does he not perceive us? No more than a blind harper. He knows no man, no face of friend, nor name of any servant, who twas that fed him last, or gave him drink. Not those he hath begotten or brought up can he remember. Has he children? Bastards. Some dozen or more, that he begot on beggars, gypsies, and Jews, and blackamoors when he was drunk. Knew you not that, sir? Tis the common fable. The dwarf, the fool, the eunuch are all his. He's the true father of his family, and all save me, but he has given them nothing. That's well, that's well. Art sure he does not hear us? Sure, sir. Why, look you, credit your own sense. Shouts in Volpone's ear. The pox approach and add to your diseases. If it would send you hence the sooner, sir, for your incontinence, it hath deserved it thoroughly, and thoroughly, and the plague to boot. You may come near, sir. Would you would once close those filthy eyes of yours that flow with slime like two frog pits, and those same hanging cheeks covered with hide instead of skin? Nay, help, sir. That look like frozen dish clout set on end. Corvino, aloud. Or like an old smoked wall on which the rain ran down in streaks. Excellent. Sir, speak out. You may be louder yet. A culverin discharged in his ear would hardly bore it. His nose is like a common sewer, still running. Tis good. And what is mouth? A very draught. Oh, stop it up. By no means. Pray you let me. Faith, I could stifle him rarely with a pillow, as well as any woman that should keep him. Do as you will, but I'll be gone. Be so. It is your presence makes him last so long. I pray you, use no violence. No, sir, why? Why should you be thus scrupulous, pray you, sir? Nay, at your discretion. Well, good sir, be gone. I will not trouble him now to take my pearl. Puh, nor your diamond. What a needless care is this afflicts you. Is not all here yours? Am not I here whom you have made your creature, that owe my being to you? Grateful Mosca, thou art my friend, my fellow, my companion, my partner, and shall share in all my fortunes. Excepting one. What's that? Your gallant wife, sir. Exit Corvino. Now is he gone. We had no other means to shoot him hence but this. My divine Mosca, thou hast to-day outdone thyself. Knocking within. Who's there? I will be troubled with no more. Prepare me music, dances, banquets, all delights. The Turk is not more sensual in his pleasures than will Volpone. Exit Mosca. Let me see. A pearl? A diamond? Plate? Chiquines? Good morning's purchase. Why, this is better than robbed churches yet, or fat by eating once a month a man. Re-enter Mosca. Who is't? The beauteous lady would be, sir. Wife to the English knight, Sir Politic, would be. This is the style, sir, has directed me. Hath sent to know how you have slept to-night, and if you would be visited. Not now. Some three hours hence. I told the squire so much. When I am high with mirth and wine, then, then. For heaven I wonder at the desperate valour of the bold English, that they dare let loose their wives to all encounters. Sir, this knight had not his name for nothing. He is politic, and knows, howe'er his wife affect strange airs, she hath not yet the face to be dishonest. But had she Signor Corvino's wife's face? Has she so rare a face? Oh, sir, the wonder, the blazing star of Italy, a wench of the first year, a beauty ripe as harvest, whose skin is whiter than a swan all over, than silver, snow, or lilies, 
a soft lip would tempt you to eternity of kissing, and flesh that melteth in the touch to blood. Bright is your gold, and lovely is your gold. Why had I not known this before? Alas, sir, myself but yesterday discovered it. How might I see her? Oh, not possible. She's kept as warily as is your gold. Never does come abroad, never takes air, but at a window. All her looks are sweet, as the first grapes or cherries, and are watched as near as they are. I must see her. Sir, there is a guard of spies ten thick upon her, all his whole household, each of which is set upon his fellow, and have all their charge when he goes out, when he comes in, examined. I will go see her, though but at her window. In some disguise, then. That is true. I must maintain mine own shape still the same. We'll think. Exeunt. End of Act One.